Sugar Project for sushi. Uh, what do you like? <laughs> instruments for Q's drum kit so that we can um, do more impromptu acoustic performances with a minimalist percussion sound. I mean, it's, it's not uncommon for me to do acoustic stuff, but it's the interesting piece is bringing the other band members into the acoustic stuff. So, um, at this point, only videos can show you that. Um, I think that the, I've always maintained that the point of the Bleeder Project is to keep the material strong enough at its core that I can always just sit down with a guitar and play it. And if I can't do that, then I, the song's not done. I know it's not It's not where the song is, is at a completed state. So that's, that's the idea. But a, a lot of it really falls back power of the song, the mood of the song, I think, comes out a lot more so through that, and um, yeah, I'm actually finding out a lot about how people perceive the material through the acoustic stuff versus the, um, the way people respond to the electronic material, so it's, yeah, it's really interesting. I had always kind of followed the Japanese music scene just sort of as a, more as a curiosity. I mean, I knew of bands like X Japan, I knew of Hide, I knew of some of those types of groups, and I had been somewhat exposed to some of the music. But um, I'd occasionally go to Japan Town in San Francisco, and go to the bookstore and look at the music magazines there. And this one day in particular, I picked up a magazine, uh, I think it was like, specialized in shock and visual K music and I just my I was stunned when I opened the book because all of a sudden I realized there's a whole world going on out there that is just like me. I'm like, oh my god, I'm not alone. This is like this is happening. There's there's a world for me out there. I am not alone in this. You know, and it was really liberating. It was really exciting and I just felt like here's these incredible bands for these beautiful, beautiful boys. Boys. And <laughs> I was trying to think of like, you know, players or musicians or, you know, whatever I was trying to think, but it, it's um these beautiful artists. They were they were taking their fashion and their glamour and the androgyny and the mysteriousness and all of this to such extremes. And then I listened to the music and it was heavy and it was dark and it was just like incredible. It had all of these things that the Bleeder Project already was. But you know, I, in honesty, even fine tuned, you know, like distilled into this perfection and I was just flabbergasted. I was so excited to find that stuff. Because America is so frightened of any sort of sexuality that they can't clearly define. So any sort of anything that shakes traditional sexual definitions, so it was in makeup is uncomfortable for a lot of America. So people don't are frightened to, to be very comfortable with that. Which is why I think like the Marilyn Manson's album Mechanical Elms. I think that's his best album in my opinion. I mean that's what I like the most. That was where he's most beautiful and most androgynous and most mysterious. And the music is most interesting.